All right, so we started with our first topic and we're still on the same. Uh, we are in detail, hands-on for everything that we have discussed so far. And as part of the topics that we have covered, starting from the organization, we have created supervisory organization, we have created cost centers, we have created locations. I hope most of you have already created location today. Uh, we're gonna do a little more hands-on on creation of the location and uh, adding that into a location hierarchy. So let's let's do that and jump right into the tenant. Right, the task is simple, you do create location. You give it a name. So since I am using Flexcon as my unique, and create Flexcon Boston. And in the location usage, I'll always use business site because I try to use it Keep it as real as possible, though you can use others as well, but the options that you get by using others might differ. Let me show an example for that. So uh, why I pick business side? Because in real time, my office is in Boston, is in California, is in many nations across Europe. All right, so that is what my use case is. So anytime you create a location, create it as a business site. And in that case, you have to define a type whether it's a corporate office, whether it's a headquarters, you will see a lot of custom as well, right? A lot of custom ones as well, like AIS headquarters is a, definitely a custom one. Right? Building is a default one, corporate office is a default one. So we'll keep it simple, we'll keep it straightforward, we'll use corporate office and business site, because if you pick up business site, you get an additional option of this, in which you have to define certain values like the time profile, this is nothing but standard working hours for that location. Since it's Boston, it's in the US, so it's 40 hours. You can also add in your own time profile as well by a simple task called as maintain time profile. Maintain time profile. This is a task, maintain time profiles. If you use this, you can add in your own time profile. Right, so let's try that out. You just click a plus sign. In real time scenario, you won't be needing this because the organization will already have this if you're using it a customer and if you are using it an implementation end, basically starting the configuration from scratch, you might need to add this. But in most cases, Workday already has some delivered like standard 40 hours, which would be named something like this. Like standard hours, standard hours. You see a lot of these versions is because again, there are people testing in this. So that's why we have created a lot of these. Right now you can pick anything, it won't make much difference. Okay, so I'll just pick the one that I have. And yeah, I just wanted to show you that you can add in your profile as well if you want. Like time profile description, I can add flex gun, standard. Uh, right. And then you get the scheduled weekly hours based on what your standard hours would be your scheduled weekly hours. So nothing but what's the allowed number of hours you have. Now, if I use that here, I have that time profile added here. I saw a hand raised. Uh, Abhishek, Rashmi, uh, I think I uh, your hand. Yeah, Rohan, so one question. Uh, wherever we create any such examples in the system, we see already like a uh, lot of objects already added. Correct. So in real-time scenarios, uh, these all will be empty and we have to add all these objects uh, based on client's requirement. So do we have any kind of, you know, a, a bulk report uh, import kind of system uh, or any tool wherein we can fill that data in one go and all this data will get updated in work. It depends on what particular action you're trying to do. Yes, there definitely would be bulk imports, but those are for specific, they are available for each and every area of module. Let's say if you want to bulk upload work address, you can do that. 
if you want to bulk change someone's business title, like maybe 100 employees business title, you can do that, right? If you want to upload bulk compensation information, you can do that. But so, like you already said that there, you see a lot of these duplicate objects being created. It's just because this environment is being used by multiple users in real time. Specifically, if we talk about time profile, you will have some default work day delivered values like standard hour 40. Okay, so not everywhere you will have to do imports. Some places work day already has some default values which you can leverage. If that is something that you don't need or you do not want to use, you can create your own as well. But there are options to bulk load, which are called EIBs, which will do, which is like the last topic in the course. And and uh, Rohan, uh, thanks for that, Rohan. And there is one more thing, Rohan. So see, whenever in a project we go, we have a dedicated requirement gathering workbook, wherein we explain to the customers uh, about any specific uh, detail like related to location, how the location works in Workday. So likewise, and then we will get the requirement from them. So in Workday also, do we have any such workbook or something? Uh, not delivered by a workbook. It has to be something which an organization creates and uh, it will be different for each and every organization. Workday does not deliver anything like that. Um, I was just asking this question based on like uh, from implementation point of, of view, when we go to a client, obviously that client will have their own set of requirements. Correct. So sometimes this, they send it uh, to us either on a, on a Excel workbook or some documents, which is provided by Workday or some other HCM company. So uh, what happens is if you are going to a client site, and giving them a demo that this is how the system works. In most cases, you have a working workbook for yourself, which is designed by someone at your organization so that you can easily make notes because that particular workbook will have, it can be an Excel spreadsheet, it can be a, a working Google Doc, it could be anything, which will have specific questions. Like what would you like to be your default time profile? What would you like to be right. time zone? Right. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So you will, as an implementation partner consultant, you will ask these questions to your client, and the answers will be your requirement gathering. Also, apart from that, if they have any additional requirements, they'll mention those to you, and you'll have to make notes for that. Usually, what I've seen, I've been part of the implementation cycles as well, and also on the client side. And what, and pre-COVID era, what used to happen is. Implementation consultant used to travel to our offices where we'll have dedicated long, like four or five hour sessions. They'll demo us what the functionality is. And it, they usually come in a group of two, one for making notes and one for giving the demo. Basically one is at a senior position, much more experience. And the other one is like basically kind of a learning hand and they make notes of all these requirements that the client has. Usually that is going to work pre-COVID era, but uh, post-COVID era, I have not seen any offices for the last three years. So I don't know how those are working right now. I'm sure it's all visual. It's all managed some or the other way. But uh, it's something that your company would provide. You get to put in the local time zone, like local is basically what time zone you are working in. You can just add that. And this is should be changed. It should be specific. Minus eight. Usually use specific Los Angeles. You can do a display language as well. Don't need to enter on other things. Uh, but definitely we populated the business side. We added some details. If you notice that we have not added any superior location, that means um, your location hierarchy are not assigned anything here. You definitely need contact information. If I try to save this, I get an error because you need one piece of contact information whenever you pick up a business site as your location. So I'll add in an address.
Make sure to mark it as a primary business because else you will get an error, right? Likewise, we have created FlexCon. We'll create another location. It could be a business side again. Oh. You can pick up multiple options as well. Give it a piece of contact information. Just a piece of advice here because someone has changed the date formatting. Like right now it's month, date, and year. But at some places you might see date, month, and year. So just make sure that you check in those before populating that. Maybe you can this is an actual address, so don't go there. If anyone is in Roseville, California. Oh, we have an error because the field time profile is required and must have value. So not populate anything here. We'll change these to So we have created two locations. One is Boston, one is California. The next thing is to club them together into a location hierarchy, All right? So that would be create location hierarchy. I have to give a reorganization event. I'll continue to use the one that I've been using since day one. So someone duplicated that, not good. Should have created your own, my friends. That's okay. Give it a name. Let's say I do it as American. Okay. I don't need to give any code or anything. Now, in this case, uh, I'll pick up the location. I think someone asked this question yesterday. So the type of organization I'm creating, I'll try to keep the same as my subtype as well. Please. 
I can assign it to a company or a call center, but I want to keep it open so that other organizations can also use that. Okay, now I've created this location America. Now I'll navigate back to my two locations that I've created, text in Boston and California, and I'll attach it to the location hierarchy. But right now, if you see something here, my superior location is empty. Now, after this step, you go to the related actions, you go to the location, assign a location hierarchy. You enter the reorganization event, which you have been using since day one, or you can create a new event if needed and add in the one that you have created. I think I made a mistake. This is the one that I have. The mistake that I did is I did not name this one as Flex Gun America. I named it as America, which is absolutely incorrect. So let's see if I have an option to edit this. This is difficult. For some things you cannot change. I hope this this will be option. All right, so I have Flexcon America. Now I'll do the same for Flexcon California. Right here. Go here, go to the location, assign location hierarchies, the organization event. And I'll give the name Flexcon and it will automatically pick up the one that is there. That's it. Now I have created a location hierarchy for Flexcon America, which has two locations, Boston and California. I can look at the org structure that I have. I can definitely add as many locations as needed based on where my company is spread across. while that loads uh the next piece of task that everyone has to do is create a couple locations in europe area like netherlands copenhagen or any any germany any emir location basically south africa middle east as well and create a location hierarchy as emir and assign those location hierarchy and basically attach the locations in the location hierarchy that would be a small assignment, but a very effective assignment because the next thing that we'll do is create positions. And in those creation of those positions, we will be using the locations that we have created. We won't be using, therefore removing any confusion on the duplicacy of the other locations. We'll be using the locations that we have created. <clears throat> so save us a lot of time. And let's see if this is populated. Okay, so now you can see Flexcon America as Flexcon Boston and California. You can uh, skip these, the other ones. This is some messed up configuration someone did. So this is my location hierarchy. As you can see, these are my locations. Right now you don't see any members here because this location has not been used anywhere to hire anyone yet. Right, once that will be done, then you can see the count, like you see a count here, 5,300 which is absurd, but you'll see a similar count here, maybe one to 10, not this much, but once you start hiring, you'll get those counts. So the assignment for today is create location hierarchies, add in multiple location to those. And uh, once you finish that, that would be the completion of the assignment, but at least a minimum of two location hierarchies, one for EMEA, one for America. If you want to add in one for JPEG as well, that's up to you. If you want to practice more, I'll leave that to you guys. Any questions on this?
Yes, Abhishek, go ahead. Uh, Rohan, what is the other one you said? Inia. 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 Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Got it. Inia. Fine. Okay. Thank you. Inia countries. Australia, Belgium, Netherlands. those locations and add it to this. And make sure the mistake that I did. I just use the location that I can use in America. They can be hundreds of America. They can use the prefix or suffix for your unique ID that you have been using. Sure. Okay. Uh, I think I have another question. Yes, Mira, go ahead. Yeah, um, I wanted to ask that right now we are just creating a location and location hierarchy, right? We are not connecting it with any company which we have created or are we? No, nothing yet. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Sure. Any more questions? Okay, if not... Uh, uh, Rohan, uh, one minute. Yes. How for, yeah. Uh, so for creating companies, is there any um, upload option? Like uh, basically many companies has uh, many entities, like some are in like in hundreds. So yes. is there any um, XML file or something like that? Is there any option like that to upload? Yes, you can do that with uh, an EIB. That is a possibility. Okay. So that will be discussed in upcoming sessions or? Um, that, like that use case might not be, but a different use case um, in the EIB session. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But okay. you will get an idea how that would be done. Okay. Uh, Manisha, you have a question? Uh, yes, uh, while creating the reorganization, I see my profile like, uh, can you, um, shall I say you how I'm getting the men's confusion? I created no. the yellow brick no. company. Okay. okay. Uh, and when I go to the create reorganization, I created a batch like CF1, uh, CF1 batch 092022, but batch is in capital letter. But when I go to create organization, I find three of them. So I go to the first one because I think I have created that, but I find similar two types of it. So will there be any duplicacy of my company or cost center related to reorganization? Can you help me navigate to where you're looking at? Um, you just went when you said that uh, someone has created some the same thing what I have did. Right. So you went to the first one, right? But there were two other options of the same name. But those are not I created. I remember the one that I created. So let me uh, open that page first. So this is where you're saying, right? Uh, yes. Yep. We know that we have created this. Uh, no, I have created CF1. This is not mine. So I have created CF1. CF, everything slice in caps. That should not be an issue. Okay. Yeah, the first one. Yeah. So there is another one on the second one. So if by mistake, if I go to the second one and click it there, will there be a duplicacy of my reorganization or no? No, uh, it won't be a duplicacy of a reorganization, but if you will uh, try to pull out data in a report based on these reorganization events, then you will see both of these with organizations that you have created. There won't be any duplicacy. 
Okay. There will be no merging or there will be no error, right? No. Because I am no. in the first one and goes to the second one. I click it there. Though, so there will be no error in pulling any of my company and cost center details. No. No errors there. Okay. 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 Thank yeah. you. So we, I've got a question. Uh, this is your first class. You have the recordings. Is there any group for this batch where you share information regarding class? So I think all the information is shared in the, so uh, Bhargavi, I'll request you to check with the support team for any batch related information or the timings or any questions that you have. They'll provide you with all the information. So I think they have a portal which everyone has access to where all this information exists. So just check with the support team and they'll be uh, happy to answer all your questions. Okay, coming back to the location topic, any questions on locations or anything what we have done so far? Yesterday, I have created a location hierarchy and from that, I have assigned locations to the location hierarchy. And today, what you have done, you have created a location and you have assigned it to a location hierarchy. Both are same or there will be a difference? Do you have the name of the location or location hierarchy you have created? Yeah, location hierarchy, GDR South India, something I created. I don't GDR. Know. GDR. 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 Goa, Delta, Romeo, GDR. Okay, so this is this one of your locations? GDR, the last one hierarchy, go to the hierarchy, yes, South India. And I have assigned locations here, like uh, I have created related actions and reorganization and assigned location I have used. And I send locations from this hierarchy. Yeah, that's also okay. They're multiple. Both are, both are same, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the micro. Yes, Thank the result is the same. You do it to a different way. I do it to a different way. It does not make a difference. Okay, thank you. Yep. So now uh, I'll, I'll again uh, open up the board for any questions, but something important I'll share right now is what we have done so far marks the foundation of uh, whatever we'll be going forward with. So uh, tomorrow's session will not be on any workday related thing. Tomorrow's sessions, obviously, it will be on work related, but not from the configuration standpoint, but understanding the different tenants that workday has, like sandbox, production, implementation, the different environments that workday provides, and each one of them has a different use case to it. I know some of us are already familiar with them here who are working in those environments, but for others, and I'll also share the workday release cycle. Workday at the end of the day is a software and software need updates. So how those updates come in and what you need to do as a workday consultant. So tomorrow's session will be dedicated for that. And uh, day after we don't have a session. On Friday, we don't have a session. It's just Thursday evening for the folks in US and Friday morning for the folks in India. So you have a good amount of time to recap everything at or uh, on Monday, right? The next week, the first session next week, what I need from every one of you is to have your own company, have at least four level of organizations. What I mean by that is if you're starting from level zero, so level zero, level one, level two, level three. All right, each level should have at least, uh, except for the level zero, all of these levels should have at least a minimum of three supervisory organizations. Okay. And each of the organizations should have a minimum of two to three employees in there. At a minimum two, the best is four. All right. And create at least four locations, four to six locations, which we have already shared one, three, two or three for EMEA, two or three for the US. Have all those things ready because whatever we'll be doing next will be the linking of all these things together and understanding the related concepts with those. All right, so you have good amount of time. You already know how to create company, how to create locations, how to uh, 
oh, the hiring is not yet done, so you can skip that. Just create four levels of organization and create multiple locations, and that should be it. We'll be doing hiring the next week, and I'll show you how that works. All right, so that's all for today. If you have any questions, uh, let's discuss those. If not, you can uh, feel free to drop off if you have other commitments. But if you have any questions, please stay back and I'm here for a few moments. Yes, Lavanya, go ahead. Yes, hi, uh, Rohan. When we create a supervisory uh, organization, you said uh, there is no delete for it, right? So we only can inactivate, right? Yes. Uh, but later on, if we want to activate the organization, can we do that to add on or transfer the members from one organization to that organization? I don't have a clear answer to that uh, because I think someone else also asked this question, maybe in this batch or the other. And I uh -huh. still don't have an answer to this, uh, but I, uh -huh. I'll be looking for that over this weekend and get back to you. Okay, sure. Okay, thank you. Anyway. Um, Rohan, uh, you said yesterday that we can uh, change the status of the supervisory organization one, only when we have zero members in it. Am I right? Correct. And um, uh, Lavanya was asking about transferring the uh, employees from one organization to another. Mm -hmm. If it is an, uh, I mean, if it is an inactive one, it won't have any members in it. So, does she mean that she wants to transfer active? No, um, what she means is that if there's an inactive organization, is there mm -hmm. a way to make it active again mm -hmm. and then transfer people into it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Um, Rohan, uh, while creating locations, um, mm -hmm. sorry, you were saying something? No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. While creating location, you said uh, we can stick on to business site. Uh, but today, while I was trying, I tried giving workspace um, in one of the options, one of the locations. Mm -hmm. And it said it, um, it cannot be set as a primary um, uh, location. It has to be subordinated to business site. So is that the reason you um, we have to always stick on to business site? Uh, in most cases, yes, because uh, see, any organization that you're working with, if they have uh, offices across different nations, that means mm -hmm. there are locations where employees go and work. Or right. basically, it's a, it's a place, even in the virtual environment, it's a place where employees report to, mm -hmm. right? So it has mm -hmm. to be a business site. If you pick it as a okay. workplace, this would be like a like one office, one floor, and multiple people sitting from different offices or different organization, which a lot of organizations are adopting right now. But it again has to come under a business site. That is what that error or the message is showing you. That you pick a business site, and if you're creating another location, you have to associate it with a parent location, basically. And uh, it's not that straightforward because the definitions of what a workspace is, what a business site will be different for different organizations. So that is why the common practice that we have seen, or at least I have seen in other organizations is they prefer using business site for every new location they create. And that works well. The reporting becomes clear. The number of people sitting in that particular location or reporting to that location also becomes very clear. So they just use business site and keep things simple. That's all. Okay, Rohan, thank you.